control. Breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And much in the vein of what we've done here recently, where I talked about IFAX, the what and the why, and I went over very in-depth on tourniquets, including staging them, it's time to talk about the rest of the stopping the bleed. Now, why is stopping the bleed important? Well, it's Stop the Bleed Month. It's May. It's time for me to provide information to people and hopefully make you better. So... If you're a firearms guy, this is my Gen 5 45. This guy is clear with my lots of cool stuff on here. My super sexy. This is uh, somebody called this the modern day Roland. I take it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just about as ubiquitous too. These things put holes in things and they make people bleed. That's kind of what they do. Also, in addition to things like that, we carry knives. Like This is my Microtech MSI. Um, knives cut things. People get hurt and injured all the time. And it's not necessarily only because of a gunfight. I mean, car accidents, industrial accidents, farming accidents. I mean, if you've ever seen what happens when um, the auger on a uh, grain elevator gets you, whew, um, it can happen. So we've talked about kind of tourniquets. I've done an overview of that. But the next part of this is something we would need, which would be your gauze which would be part of the M, part of the March algorithm, massive hemorrhaging, um, as well as kind of circulation. So it would be wounds and injuries. Something to keep in mind. What, the stuff that we're talking about primarily is going to be used for junctional site wounds. So think base of neck, a la Kentucky Ballistics. Just put a thumb in it. Um, junctional wounds here into the armpit, into the pelvic girdle, high up where you cannot physically put a tourniquet. That is where we're going to use things like packing gauze. Uh, and we're going to actually seal, uh, do that wound. So first off, we got to talk about how do we stop a bleed? So let's say, for example, we have a bleed here or in the pelvic girdle area. We are going to stop those kinds of bleeds. We're going to figure out where the blood is coming from, and then we're going to apply direct sustained pressure to that area. Now, <laughs> this is very important, and people need to hear me. There's absolutely nothing, and I repeat, absolutely nothing friendly or painless about what I am going to tell you to do. Also, anything about emergency medicine. Like, it hurts. Um, if they pass out, they are now a compliant patient that doesn't fight you. Yay for that. Um, also, if they die, they can't be an asshole. So, also that. So, anyway, that's what we do with Stop the Bleed. So, that's why gauze is super important. Now, typically, when we refer to gauze, we're referring to something like compressed gauze from North American Rescue or... Um, Combat gauze, so quick clot. Um, you can also do Celox, Kaido. Um, there's a bunch of different brands, but I'll get into that. So these are the two kinds of gauze that we're referring to. But the third part of this is what's known as a pressure bandage. So we could have pressure bandage. Or a pressure bandage. So this is an Olay's modular pressure bandage from TACMED Solutions. This is a flat fold ETD or emergency trauma dressing from North American Rescue. These are the same freaking thing. They are built a little different, but that is the other part of the equation. So number one, probably the one everybody thinks of when we talk about gauze, and that is your hemostatic agent. It is one of the most, it is the most expensive single item that goes into your IFAC. A good tourniquet is going to set you back mid thirties. Um, this is going to be 50 bucks plus for this one package of gauze. Now, I'm going to implore you, because people do this because they're trying to get it cheaper. This is one everybody sees. It's at every REI or sportsman's warehouse that you'll find. Um, and here, here's the problem. So this right here is three inches by 24 inches. This is two feet of hemostatic gauze. So what is hemostatic gauze? Hemostatic gauze has a clotting agent impregnated into the gauze itself that promotes the body's natural clotting ability, right? Then we look at actual combat gauze. Now, actual combat gauze is three inches wide, so same width, but this is four yards long. Four yards may sound like a lot of stuff. That's four yards in this little thing. This is four yards of gauze. It takes a lot of gauze to pack a hole, 
Okay, I'm just going to let you know that you would be amazed at how much gauze can actually fit inside of a human body in a hole, like in a, in a, you know, a junctional wound, like in the hip or in the shoulder. It takes a lot. But really, there are three brands that I recommend as far as gauze go. One is um, combat gauze. So that's this stuff. Quick clot, combat gauze. That's my favorite. Next to that is Kaido gauze kaido xr and stuff like that that stuff's really really good and then last for me is cellox or celox c-e-l-o-x i am not as big a fan as cellox i will absolutely take quick clot or kaido gauze over it every day of the week kaido gauze and quick clot are very interchangeable for me they're both very good in my experience um so why do you why do you need it so here's the deal Hemostatic gauze it increases the body's natural ability to clot. Clotting is how we stop blood loss. Anything that gives you an edge in that fight is something you need. But you, you know, I could also, and I mean, also the other thing I hear with this is, what do you do with it? And to be honest with you, the instructions are god awful, right? Like you see the instructions. The instructions say I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on the wound. No. Um, because that doesn't do me any good. Now, granted, there is some effect from this. It's known as the cascade effect. So as blood hits that, it would seep down into the wound itself. And some of the, the, the uh, material that helps you coagulate blood a little better and clot that wound up will get down to it. But the most effective way to stop bleeding, especially in a really bad bleed in the junctional site, is to put direct pressure on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this finger and I'm going to shove it inside of your body. Yeah, it's going to suck, man. I'm going to find where the blood is coming from and I'm going to hold my finger on it. I'm going to take that gauze, that quick clot, and I'm going to make a little power ball. And I'm going to replace my finger with a ball of gauze all the way down inside. And then I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold, twist, and push. I'm going to keep shoving it in there. I will get this whole thing into your hole in your leg. Absolutely, it's going to happen. But there's other quick clot stuff we hear about. And it is like pellets from Cellox. Don't do that. The surgeon will hunt you down afterwards and come and get you. It seems like a really cool idea. Don't do it. Uh, or the powder, the old school powder you pour the powder on. Um, no, that stuff actually causes burns, um, believe it or not. The stuff's not very nice. I will say I don't like powder because there's no way for me to control the powder and how densely that powder gets to where I need it to go. You will see on this stuff where it says things like, for external use. No, I'm shoving it in the hole, man. Sorry, that's what it's there for. Uh, external use is to limit their liability for this. Um, I will tell you in practical usage, it does work some, but it's much better if I can get it to the hole. So then packing gauze. What is packing gauze? Packing gauze, very simply put, in the high-speed cool guy versions look like this. They're compressed and they're, they're very clean and tight packaging. But it's also this. Um, this is also packing gauze right there so what's the difference not much man this stuff's only a couple bucks a package so it's really inexpensive to get this i highly recommend having a lot of gauze i'm not a fan of the loose wrap stuff um but i would i would i'd rather have this if i'm honest so somebody's going to see this and their initial thought is would i still use this yes i would <laughs> Um, just like this. This is actually this gauze open. Would I still use this on a person? Yes, I would. But it's not sterile. You have a hole in you caused by a foreign object. Neither's the hole. But they're going to get an infection. Right. Right. But they have to be alive to get an infection. We would all agree that the purpose of emergency medicine is to keep them alive. Again, we are not stopping the clock. We are not a surgical ward. We are not going to repair the issue. We are slowing down the time passage and that clock long enough for them to get a higher level of medical care to be saved. That's your job. That's what emergency medicine is about. That's what tactical medicine is about. And if you don't live through it, you can't get an infection. So be mad at me about your infection after you survive it. Okay? I, I don't care. I will take your dirty, grubby t-shirt and shove it in the hole. So when we look at these, there's a bunch of different options you'll see. You'll see Z-fold, which is actually pretty cool. You will see S-rolled, which is a little more effective to get out of the thing. You will see rolled gauze, and you will see this. Now, here's the problem with this. So this stuff right here is folded over itself, right? So we have Z-fold now, right? See how it comes out? 
So this is a lot of gauze. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to wrap this guy up, and I'm going to shove this into the hole. And then I'm going to keep doing it. I'm actually going to do a demo of that in a short video so you guys have it and can share it with other people. Now, something I will do with this, I don't want this on the ground while I'm doing this, but what I will do with mine is I will tuck it in my vest or in my jacket, like right here, and I will work out of my jacket poking the hole so that I don't just have this like getting soaked up with blood before I get it in the hole. If you have the round gauze, something we can do with the round gauze is I can pick here in the center. Now look at that. Bet you didn't know you could do that with the cheap round gauze, right? That is perfect. Same deal. I can take this, hold this in this hand. Powerball, push it in the hole, right? So we say I powerball, pushed it in the hole. Take it, push it back in the hole. Again, we'll do a thing. But yeah, just pick the center out and you can actually pull this stuff out. It's pretty cool. Um, so that is what we're, we're talking about for gauze. It is fantastic. And again, the sterile thing, you can't get an infection. If you die, fix them. They'll be fine. We make antibiotics, man. That stuff is really good at, at solving the problem. But again, you don't get to be infected if you die on the spot. So again, pack the hole. Let them deal with the infection at the hospital. That is not a you problem. That is a hospital problem. So the next one I hear when we talk about this. So we've talked about kind of your basic gauze, your basic this. The next one is pressure bandages. Um, you hear this referred to a lot. It's referred to by different names. Something you will hear referred to is the Israeli pressure bandage, the ETD, or the Olays. Those are the most common ones you'll see. The Israeli pressure bandage is what was issued in the military. There's also the H-bar and the mini H-bar. But the most common two and the two that I recommend the most are the ETD from North American Rescue. So we'll take a look at it first. So this is an ETD. It is not pink. This ETD is from a training evolution um, because I teach this stuff for as a part of my job, but I also, I constantly train it. So this is uh, fake blood. So basically what happens when I pull out this ETD is I'm going to have this, right? Basically what I have is I have a gauze pad with a pressure bar and I have an elastic bandage, okay? So if I were to take this and I were to, we'll say, get it, we'll say I, I will get it on there. When I come around with this guy, I'm going to take it and I'm going to feed this guy through this band, this little notch. And then I'm going to come back over the top of itself with that. That is going to create a ton of pressure on my wrist. And then I'm going to wrap this guy up with the rest of this ACE bandage. That is how you employ an emergency trauma dressing. And that is just how it works. So this is your pad. Now keep in mind, these are made to be used in the... Now, if you had a, a head wound, head wounds bleed like the demon. So you take it, you put this on the head wound, wrap the head wound with this. It's usually enough to solve the problem. Um, if you don't have a head wound and we just have like a big laceration on the arm or something like that, this will typically be used in conjunction with gauze where I packed the wound and I'm using this to provide consistent, constant pressure to that wound itself. And, and that is kind of, that's how this works. So this is the ETD, North American Rescue, flat fold ETD, the responder. And then we have the Olays. The Olays modular pressure bandage. These are really, really freaking cool. This is an Olays modular pressure bandage. You'll see this cup right here. So this cup is a pressure cup. However, I can also rip this off and put it on some, over somebody's eye, and it's now an eye shield. It's a modular bandage, lots of stuff. So I have Velcro on this guy, and you see I have my big combi pad here. Now here's what's cool about the Olays. It's got Velcro in it, so it stops it from unraveling. This is what's cool about the Olays. Inside behind that pad, I have a piece of plastic that I can use as a makeshift chest seal, occlusive dressing. But also, I pull that open, I have packing gauze. That's not a part of the pad. So with just the Olays, I can rip it out, pack this wound, and then use the pressure bandage 
the exact same way, but I have an occlusive dressing that I can use for makeshift and I have packing gauze all built into this situation. This functions much the same way. I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to take this guy right here. I need to get this damn thing to tighten up. So I'm going to come over the top and that's how we get a pressure bandage. Something I will do to mine is I will, can't, I will cant this guy and I will make that cant hit over the top of that cup to put even more pressure on that wound. I can feel where that cup is on the top of my wrist. So that is how one of these works. So what you're going to do is as you pay this thing all the way out and you do it and you've wrapped it up, you have this clip at the end and we're just going to feed that clip over the top of this and it'll clip on. So that is the Olay's modular pressure bandage. Really cool stuff and exceptionally well done. So the Olay's. The Olay's is big and chunky, I will tell you that. But they're both very good. If I had to pick, I like the form factor of the ETD. It's very similar to the Israeli pressure bandage. It's almost exactly the same. It's much flatter. But if I could only have one and it was going to live in my pack, I'm going to take the Olay's because it gives me more options. Having the ability to have an occlusive dressing, packing gauze, and a pressure bandage in one contained thing, plus an eye shield, pretty cool stuff. Well, I can't afford to get into... Combat gauze. Okay. Real talk. Combat gauze is very good at what it does, but it is not something that will replace your ability to properly pack a wound. If I do not get this inside of the wound, now here's the thing, this isn't an instant solution. Once I pack this into the wound, I am going to apply direct pressure for three to five minutes. Hard pressure because I'm trying to force the issue of the clotting agent, making that happen. But if I don't get it all the way to the hole, to the, the bleed spot, it's not really as effective. And there is some testing done, and guys have done it, comparing normal packing gauze to this. If you can pack a wound, if you can't afford this, buy eight or nine of these at two bucks a piece. Practice with it. Get good at packing a wound. Um, I got to find a pool noodle because I'm going to show you guys how to make a, pa a wound packing trainer at your house. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make Powerball and pack a wound uh, with that very short video that'll come on that later on. This is more of an overview. But I would take more of this over the combat gauze if it was a money situation. This is really, this is a nice to have. This is a you got to have, right? So gauze is always a got to have. Combat gauze is a nice to have if you have really good packing technique. The this will make what you do better, but it's not going to, you're not going to fail because you don't have this. I would also say monetarily wise, so like the Olay's pressure bandage are about $9 a piece. Maybe you are trying to set up multiple kits and you can't afford that. What would you do? Easy sauce, right? Ace bandages. After all, that's an ace bandage. That's all we're doing, man. This is a, a mode to keep pressure on a wound that we packed with gauze. So if I combined one of these with a couple of these, and these are really cheap, and I can make them very small, and I pack the wound with this, and then I get almost to the top, and I have a little bit left, and I take that big clump, and I sit it on top of the wound, and I've used, I apply the pressure directly over this clump on top of the wound, I am doing effectively the same thing I did with either the tension bar or the eye cup on the Olay's or the ETD. So you don't have to have the fancy dressing. You can go to Walmart right now and get an ace bandage and some gauze and you'd be good to go. Like, like you can absolutely do that. So the, there is some stuff to it. Now, here's the thing. What if you have these and you run out of them? What did I just tell you to do, right? Make shift. You can make shift this stuff especially packing stuff on the field, like instantly, instantly happen. If I'm out in the field and let's say 
I am dealing with multiple casualties and I have used my stuff up and I get to this guy and this guy is bleeding profusely from like right here in his shoulder. I will take his t-shirt, rip it off, whatever, and I will feed that t-shirt and strips into that hole until I fill that wound up and can provide the proper amount of pressure. Again, infection! If you die, infection doesn't matter. I would rather you live so that you can be treated for infection. Do that. Wrap it up with an ace bandage to provide that pressure. Uh, usually these things exist in normal first aid kits all over businesses. You could also carry a SWAT T tourniquet. I use those all the time in training. That is how I like to make pressure bandages. But these are cheap. Uh, this is like a buck fifty and like three dollars for five rolls of this. So I could buy four of these for six bucks and then like another like say five dollars worth of gauze. I'm eleven dollars in and I have multiple pressure dressings that I can use and augment and make work. I can also take this for smaller wounds and injuries. Like if you just have a cut on your arm, maybe I only powerball out that much into the cut on your arm and then I wrap your arm in this gauze to protect the wound until you're transported. So the last part of this, and this is very, very important, an emergency blanket. Now, if you watch the IFAC video, I'll leave a link, I talk about emergency blankets and why they're important. So there's this phenomenon that takes place when you start bleeding from a traumatic injury. As you lose blood, your body's core temperature falls, right? You get colder. Um, as you get colder, your body's ability for platelet, ca platelet cascade to clot or a clotting cascade from platelet sticking decreases. They become slicker and they slide around and stuff like that. Okay, that's a problem, right? Because you're losing blood, you've lost blood, which lowered your core temperature, and that lower, lowered in core temperature is making your platelets not stick together, which is making you lose more blood, causing your temperature to drop even faster. You have to keep your casualty warm. Once you've pressure bandaged that stuff and you've put pressure on it and you've done what you can do to pack it, don't strip them naked and wrap them in this. Wrap them up in everything. Wrap them up in your coat. I don't care. Get them with as warm as you can and then seal that in with an emergency space blanket. It will help them to not go into shock. It will also help their ability to clot. It's a real thing. It takes place, again, very, very, very cheap. So let's look at a makeshift pressure bandage with an emergency blanket. That's very small. We would all agree this weighs nothing and is very small. Maybe I have one of these in my backpack and then I just have a couple of, of these four or five things of these in my bag. You know, maybe, maybe that's the option, right? Quit clotting this. You need to have something that will fashion a pressure bandage or a standalone pressure bandage. You, I will take normal gauze all day over not having a multiple packs of normal gauze and only having one thing of quick clot. If you have the money to do it, I highly recommend you bite the bullet, spend the 50 bucks on a thing of quick clot. Buy that, spend about six to eight bucks, get you three or four packages of compressed gauze. Go to Walmart, buy you a couple of ACE bandages, and then either go on TACMED Solutions and pick up an Olay's modular pressure bandage or North American Rescue and get you a four inch flat folded ETD. You can absolutely do that and be effective. Um, you can find the Israeli pressure bandages all the time from uh, like surplus stuff. They'll work just fine. They, they, they will. People will have a problem with this one because they'll be like, oh my God, the seal's broken. It's not sterile. Again, I don't care, man. You have to live through this to have to worry about an infection. Um, whatever, man. You can be mad at me about your infection later. Again, you also had a hole in your body that came from something entering it that uh, I guarantee you wasn't clean when it entered. So that is the rest of Stop the Bleed, guys. So as a total thing for Stop the Bleed, we need a good tourniquet. We need a good cat, soft T, uh, a Sam XT, something like that. We need a good TCCC approved tourniquet, preferably more than one, preferably four of these to do it right, but at least one. We need a decent pressure bandage of some kind that we can use on the fly and carry with us. We need a couple things of gauze so that we can pack wounds. If we can afford it, we need a thing of combat gauze. And then having an extra couple of elastic wraps and always a good space blanket. It's the best way to do this. It's going to allow you to have the most impact that you can with the least amount of equipment.
So guys, hopefully you found this informative. Maybe you're better prepared today because you know something. Stay tuned for the short videos. There will be a short on staging a tourniquet. There will also be a short on making a field expedient trainer at the house and how to pack, uh, pack wounds and practice packing wounds with gauze. And then find yourself a class, a tack med class, something like that. Go out and actually do this stuff under pressure while people are spraying you in the face with blood. It's a really good time. And all of your kit comes back looking like this. So guys, I am Uncle Freedom. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Until next time. I'll see you later.